Hey everyone, Adrian Graham here, product designer for Bifrost and Maya. And we're going to look at how we do uh, some aero explosion uh, with some nice variation of uh, the emission pattern and everything today. Um, so first I'm just going to take this plain old sphere and I'm going to uh, increase the subdivisions. Because we're going to use an, uh, a noise deformer, uh, sorry, a uh, texture deformer with a noise. Uh, to get look of a lumpy sphere is pretty much what I want to do. So uh, in my, I'm in modeling mode, I'm going to go deform. Texture Deformer, set the strength to, and I'm going to add a noise texture. And you'll see that it's going the wrong direction. Um, we need to uh, have the direction go from handle to normal, normal of the sphere. All right, so let's look at some of the, we can also change that to world. Uh, let's look at some of the uh, settings here. Select that so we don't have to look at that. Change noise type to billow. And... That's cool. We'll deal with that. And then the only thing we need to do is animate this time. So I'm going to set to equals frame. So as I play forward, you get just this crazy, uh, insane blobbing there. So we're going to use this as our emitter. And because we've got a nice uneven surface here, it's going to give us some interesting detail. Um, you can layer multiple deformers on top of this and uh, maybe get some more interesting random shapes. Uh, but we're just going to work with this for right now. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, just slide it up. I'm going to uh, just a little bit, and we're going to start this at frame 5, for example. Oops. Ah, and another thing we need to do is, so we can't just scale this guy down because you see there's some strange things going through. It's crawling through the deformer. So something that's uh, much handier than uh, having a live deformer in your scene is to bring in, is to cache it out as an Alembic cache and then bring it back in. So here I can import my Alembic object. I've got this arrow explosion and it's single object. So there's no de deformations or anything. It's the same thing that you saw before baked out. I only did 24 frames of it. You don't need to do any more. So I'll slide that up. Our sim is going to start on frame five. So I want it to be to start off real small. Uh, let's do it like that. So I'm going to keyframe the translate and the scale, and maybe up to frame 9, we're going to scale them up and move it up. All right, so uh, let's look at the uh, our graph editor here and just make sure that our these guys are going to be uh, flat, and I want the uh, scale to really jump. So I'm going to jump it like that and have it lead in straight on. It's no big deal. It's only happening over a few frames, but we really want to get a big acceleration there. And the translate, uh, we can, oh, we can just leave it like that. That's fine. So if we see it like that and we animate the, uh, the visibility, let's keyframe that and then at frame five it's on. Frame 9, it's off. So it's just going to look like that. Just like that. All right, so that's the first step. Next, let's create a, just a ground plane for us. I'll just create a cube. And I'm going to slide it down. So it's sitting right at, the, uh, right at the origin. No, it doesn't matter exactly where it is. And so now we get to make this guy into uh, an emitter, an arrow emitter. So I'm going to go under Effects. By frost, create arrow, and right off the bat, we're not going to see much because, well, first of all, we need to animate the uh, the emission um, on and off. Uh, we don't really need this to uh, to emit more than the few frames that it's scaling up. So let's do that. I'm going to go back to the cube. I'm going to turn off by frost arrow enable. Keyframe that. Go ahead to frame 5, key it on. Frame 9, key it off. So we get this, this simple little emission there. Now there's going to be a couple problems here. And let's have a look at that. So let's increase the resolution. Um, right now we're looking at uh, particles, and we also want to maybe view voxels. We'll view voxels in a second. Let's turn off the bounding box, increase the count in the display. Um, we're going to increase the resolution by decreasing the master voxel size. So let's just go to maybe 0.25, and you'll see we'll get some more detail there. Let me actually 
hide. I don't want this uh, the visibility at all. So now we don't need to see this. All right. So we got a quick little emission, and we also need to create some sort of compressibility with the ground here. So just make that make the ground plane a collider, and that's going to well. You, it's also, you're noticing problems here because it's it's emitting underneath. So uh, what we need to do is uh, increase this, the height of this. So I'm going to make this uh, too high, translate y negative 1. Okay, so anything that's emitted is, uh, nothing's emitted below, but if anything tries to force itself down, it's going to get pushed up. So still not very high resolution. We only got 44, 45 thousand particles. Ideally, we'd have maybe a million particles for this. Uh, and you could really see the difference when you look at the, uh, at the voxels themselves. So if you turn off the particles and see the voxels go into shaded mode, uh, you can see it's really low resolution. So next step is going to be to make this much higher resolution. And we can do that a couple different ways. We can uh, reduce the master voxel size, but we can also reduce the voxel size render factor. Now, uh, let me turn Scratch Cache on and play a few frames as well so that we can scrub through it. And what's interesting here, oh, by the way, we only want to start this at frame 5. There we go. Um, so what's interesting with how Bifrost handles aero simulations is that there's two different simulations going on. Uh, there's the flip sim and then there's the render sim. There's two different sets of particles. Let's turn the particles on and look at those first. So if we look at that, we see the particles here. But if we go under component display, you see we're viewing the, the actual particles. If you view the flip particles, these correspond with the, uh, with the, uh, the flip grid. And that's how Bifrost works. It's advecting how Bifrost arrow works, I should say. Let me just change the background here so you can see it. It's advecting the render particles through the flip simulation. And we could watch, uh, we could turn on uh, the vector display here. And you could see that there's velocity being fed into uh, all these tiles. That's what they're called tiles. You can actually view the tiles by going under tile view display and enabling the tiles. And if you look at the top level of the tiles, you'll see that they correspond with the flip particles. Now there's different levels of tiles visible um, and you can control their color and everything and, um, and uh, the transparency when you view them. These aren't renderable, but you could see we're populating different tiles, and there's multiple resolutions going on here in the tile tree. And that's what you're looking at with flip particles. Now, if you look at the regular particles, those are considered the, the, uh, the render particles. This is what, gen what push around the voxels themselves. So we can play that forward, and we can view voxels in the same way. So these are the render voxels. And here we volume, I should say. Then there's the flip volume, which is a little bit different. Uh, it's not as blocky, it's not as chunky, because it doesn't extend into the tile tree as much as the other. Um, and it actually isn't that helpful to view this until you're dealing with multiple resolutions uh, in, um, uh, in, ad in uh, adaptive mesh setups, which we'll look at in another video. Anyways, let's uh, increase the resolution on this. And uh, I'm going to crank this down to 0 0.05. And I'm going to play through, pause this, and come back once it's simmed. Okay, so I finished my sim and uh, changed my frame range to zero, uh, to one from one to sixty, uh, just so that I don't didn't have to sim all that much. Now, also notice as I'm scrubbing, the display gets a little crispy. I release the mouse button, and it upreses, and that's sort of the beginnings of what we're hoping to do for being able to draw really really dense heavy things uh, in the viewport. Uh, turn on smoothing here. So you'll also notice my Bifrost HUD up in the corner, which you can turn on and off with this guy. Um, you, you see particle count is staying very steady um, until the particles start dying because they're getting old. But the voxel count keeps growing. And that, of course, is because the tile tree keeps growing as well. Um, uh, if we go back and look at the uh, shape and we turn on the tile tree, you can visualize the tile view, I should say. You can visualize, see how many more. Let's only look at level 7. So here we start with very few voxels, only half a million. But then we go up here, we go to the, towards the end, and we're looking at 2 million because it's expanding into new areas and it creates a lot more voxels. So 
even though you're not emitting anymore, there's still a lot more data being generated. All right, so what else can we do here? Um, we can do a few things. First of all, this is with default lighting. So let's uh, create a directional light and turn on lighting there. And just scale that up there. So, um, and it's not going to have that much of an effect until we increase the density of the uh, of the the uh, the arrow as well. So, um, we've got this density scale in the arrow material, which you can turn up, and that's just like that's a that's a display only thing. It has nothing to do with uh, the number of voxels or anything. So you could make it super thick, and it'll really start to occlude. There you go. So now it's even casting shadows on itself. And you can do all sorts of cool stuff by playing with the emission. You can even animate it or something. Um, what if you get, gave it like a really hot orange or something like, uh, like that and turn the intensity way down. There you go. So, so we could even animate that. Let's go frame five. It's going to be set that key and then Frame right, 9, the intensity is going to be back to 0, so, and we want to make it a little bit more reddish, we'll do something like that. We could also achieve that with a light, so we could create a uh, spotlight, point light I should say, and make him that hot orange with quadratic decay, and Let's make his intensity 5 there, set a key there, intensity 0, and then down to 0 as well. So you do something quick like that, it's just a little trick there. Um, back to the, uh, the arrow material, uh, there's uh, scattering which will uh, essentially uh, reduce the, um, the illumination within, which is kind of cool. If you want to have black smoke, you can do that. That's, here we're just doing keeping it sort of gray, uh, and then there's absorption, which will effectively make it you know more opaque. Uh, so you can just play with those and, and get a, a decent look. Um, so I guess that's it. I guess that's what we're going to talk about today. And you know, if you look back at the first few frames, you're getting some really interesting emission patterns, um, as opposed to that. You know, if you emit just from a sphere, you get a big mushroom cloud. Um, which is, you know, what the simulation should do, but it's not what would look nice necessarily. So here you get a nice uh, sort of flowing, um, uh, sort of sinuous look. Uh, this isn't even that high res. This only took about six or seven seconds of frame. So if you really want to crank it up, um, I would maybe set the master voxel size to 0.25 or 0.025 or 0.01 or something. You can also play with the voxel size render factor, which will... Um, uh, reduce the size of the render voxel, uh, the, sorry, the render voxels, not the flip voxels, um, which will give you a, a much more detailed result as well. But all this comes at a cost, obviously. So um, I hope you had a, uh, hope you learned something, and I'll uh, talk to you guys soon.